Hey there, Seth Juarez here with another episode of Code Stories. We're here in Johannesburg, South Africa, to talk to David, CEO of Community, to see what he's doing locally with Azure. Let's check it out. Hello, my friend. Hey, Seth, welcome to South Africa. Thank you so much. Tell us who you are and what you do, my friend. So I'm David Prosser. Uh, I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Community. We build a rapid digitization platform that runs in Microsoft Azure. So I heard a little bit about this town called Nizna that used your platform during a particularly difficult time. Tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, Nizna built a, a digital system that runs on the Community platform. Um, and they faced a massive disaster where they had uh, huge bushfires and the community platform was used by the, the town of Nisner, um to manage that disaster um, and manage the way that they saved lives and manage the relief effort. Hi there, my name is Graham Huddy. I'm the IT manager at Nisner Municipality. The town of Nisner is uh, in the Garden Route in the Western Cape of South Africa. We're located about 500 kilometers to the east of Cape Town and about 1,000 kilometers away from Joburg. Uh, about 70,000 residents. We're a small town and a small community. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the challenges that the community platform was supposed to solve for you? Initially, the app was used for communicating news and reporting things like potholes um, and other information to our citizens. Uh, but it has evolved into something a little bit more complex. Some of the community folks were telling me here about this disaster that happened in Nizna and how the platform helped. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? So essentially in June 2017, uh, we had a large fire that uh, originated um, about 30 kilometers away from the town in the mountains. Uh, and with winds of over 100 k's an hour, the firestorm just got blown straight towards the town. Uh, the town does uh, sit in a bowl around a lagoon, uh, surrounded by forests. So essentially the town got cut off from the outside world. The, the highway on both sides was cut off. Uh, communications were affected, cellular networks, electricity, and the community platform was used as a key tool in communicating uh, with our citizens in managing the disaster. We are able to do general broadcast communications um, to, the, to our citizens and we receive the uh, feedback in private so that if there is information that differs on the ground to what we know, we can still receive it and we can update our comms and, and send out a communication. In addition, we can also do targeted messages so we could pick particular suburbs that needed to uh, evacuate. And through, the, through those targeted messages, you could really focus on the citizens that needed to receive the communications most. It is not just the initial disaster. Whilst our fire burned for up to a week, you have the initial event and then you have the aftermath. And the, the app really started uh, coming to the fore in the aftermath. So can you give me a, a, a real life human example of how people were affected by the fires and how the, the platform helped out during this situation of crisis? The fire resulted in over a thousand households losing their homes in the town. In a 70,000, uh, population 70,000, a thousand households is a very large percentage of our population. What that brought with it was a lot of social relief issues that we as a municipality were not equipped to deal with. Two, two ways that the app was, was used is one obviously to communicate uh, community meetings and updates uh, for the face-to-face -face communication. But another way we used it was um, to actually build a humanitarian relief module within the platform, which we managed to go from idea phase whiteboard uh, to production in uh, under two weeks. So the idea was we had uh, many uh, NGOs, uh, different departments uh, uh, come into town and each with their own particular service they wanted to provide to support our citizens. So we were able to build a module where we could actually log the relief that was provided uh, to those citizens. Okay, so some background into my department. Uh, okay. we, at, at the time of the disaster, there was a total of nine of us, nine members of the staff in my department, not a single developer. And I had 
connectivity for my whole organization, 350 users, 50 locations. Uh, I had three 10 meg ADSL lines. And that was it. And during the fire, did any of these go out? So, so on the night of the fire, I had uh, my ISDN lines, which run my telephone network, were down. Um, and I had one 10 meg ADSL line that was live. Um, so in order to, to build an um, a emergency call center, I, I bought two Skype phone numbers and set up a, a call center in the middle of the night. Uh, and then first thing the next morning, I went to the, the local uh, local shop and bought five cell phones and got those numbers up as, as emergency uh, phone numbers. And so the people that needed the services that they needed during this disaster were able to get to them, even though the services that you had went down, you were able to dynamically change all of this pretty quickly. So I heard a little bit about Nisna, but I was hoping you could fill in maybe some of the more of the, of the story for me. Yeah, so of course, you know, one of the real benefits of, of having a low code platform is that it's very quick to make changes to the system. So the system that was deployed at Nisna was a typical citizen engagement platform. Citizens were able to access their various services, uh, log complaints, log faults, etc. But of course, these, these terrible fires broke out. And you know, we were very quickly able to change the entire interface to almost become a disaster management system. They had problems where the, the landlines went down. They were able to very quickly publish through the app what the emergency numbers were to start um, creating functionality to report where incidents were happening and then to manage the aftermath of a, a disaster like those fires, you know, where, where you've got to manage um, people who need food and, and shelter, etc. And that was all we were very quickly able to deliver that through the platform. So you're telling me that during this disaster, they were able to pivot their entire applications to service this need right away? Literally in real time. You know, our, our teams working on the application, the minute the disaster broke out, were going into the toolkit, making the changes, pushing those changes through to production, you know, and getting, getting those uh, services and, and capabilities into the citizens' hands literally within hours. So you've described a lot of interesting functionality that was able to be deployed really quickly. Can you show me how this was done? Oh, sure. Uh, so the first thing, you know, the, the community platform is available through the Azure Marketplace. So as, as a user, you would come in and um, one of the options is to deploy the community platform through the Azure Marketplace. We also do have a multi-tenant uh, model where you can literally just come on and start using the platform. Of course, once the platform is deployed, as a developer, you need to now start getting into the tools and, and customizing and configuring. So for that, we go into our uh, community platform toolkit. And this is really the, the, the IDE for the community platform where they would actually uh, develop the project. So here we're looking at the landing page for a project. As this is a low-code project, you know, closely associated with Visual Studio, as you start building out the project, it's ultimately generating the code in Visual Studio, um, Entity Framework code first, and uh, once you've done all that work, you can go ahead and publish, and that the platform then takes care of all that hard work around publishing all these various assets into the platform, deploying the, the uh, data services, deploying the, the SQL schema into SQL Azure, etc. So when you push that publish button, it sends it out to a website and to all of the phone applications as well? Correct, yes. The platform actually auto-builds uh, all the native applications for all versions of iOS, all versions of Android. So here we have a, a version running on Android. Uh, this is the actual production Nizen application. And even these uh, feature phones. So this is a native application, Java Micro, running on the old feature phones, the old Nokias, etc. So you mentioned that you had to make some quick changes for Nisna to be able to empower them during this disaster. Can you show us how those changes were made here? You, you would set up the templates of your communication. The, the end user themselves is able to choose which channels they want to be communicated on. We then go out and add essentially these event handlers. So when somebody logs a new fault, we wire in uh, what channels they can be contacted on. In a particular channel, you can go in and set up the, the, what the um, the template is going to be for that message and then very quickly again using a low code or no code model in this case you're able to wire in communications across multiple channels. Can you show me what Nisna did on, the, on their phones? Yeah sure so yeah, I'm showing you the uh, live application natively running on uh, Android this is the production Nisna application. There's the news um, you know they're very proactive around keeping their citizens informed around news 
notifications around any service delivery issues, etc. Um, the ability to sort of list faults, uh, log faults, etc. What about the feature phones? Yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, I've got exactly the same application for Nasna. We're very excited about the ability to deliver applications on these feature phones. So this is a native application running Java Micro on these devices. This is the Nizen production application. It's running exactly the same sets of services. So here we're looking at the news application. Um, of course, these feature phones do have some features which are not available on all devices. This device may not support GPS, for example. So the platform gracefully degrades those kind of services and we're delivering these services to citizens who normally wouldn't get access to such di uh, digital capabilities. So this is all built on Azure. Can you describe what part of Azure you're using? Yeah, so as I said, the community platform basically sits as a plane on top of Azure, so we're leveraging a, a number of the services below. We're using the Azure infrastructure services uh, to deploy the services and microservices. We use SQL Azure as the primary data store. We're using blob storage for things like media, table storage, uh, we're using um, components such as logic apps to do some of the workflow type work. Um, and then we're leveraging some of the sort of dev capabilities. We're using Azure DevOps and the build pipelines to automate all the client builds for Android, iOS, uh, for the Java Micro, etc., the web deployments, um, and various other components. We're using a lot of the monitoring capabilities which we surface up through the platform. The last question I wanted to ask is, obviously your municipality had established processes and rules. How did you tie those in to the community platform? So that's one of the biggest challenges with the platform, uh, is that uh, sometimes the technology is moving faster than the working bits in the background. We're still, we're still on that, that learning curve. I think the key was the, the rapid deployment, um, the ability to be agile. Um, and obviously, it's available everywhere. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us. It's a very powerful way that you're using digital transformation to really empower your citizens, as well as the municipality to do amazing things. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. That was amazing. We talked to the CEO, CTO, and an actual municipality using the community platform that works on top of Azure. What an amazing story. This and other code stories are online. Make sure you check them out. See you later.